Hey guys, Sloan at BA Carts. I'm covering how you install the SVR2 and GLD4 plug and play sound system on the Evolution Golf Cart in this video. But if you haven't seen my video going in depth on both of these kits, showing you what they bring to the table with the features, the lights, everything we've done, then definitely tune into that video after this video is over. And with that, let's get into the install. So when you open the box of the SVR2 or GLD4, you're going to find that you have the BA power plate, which already has the fuse panel with the fuses in it. You also have your low output converter and your amp. And then if you buy the LED package for either the speakers or the underglows or both, you will have the XK Glow uh, controller on the BA power plate as well. And then everything's pre-wired. So you've got the um, out of the inverter, the in, and the in to the inverter. Everything's pre-wired for the LEDs, for the front speakers, for the rear speakers. And then you'll also find the box, your front Hertz speakers, the HEXs. These are pre-wired for audio as well. And then if you buy the LED option too, that, that will be pre-wired. And then you will also have the harness that runs from the BA power plate up to the dash, connecting your amp and everything in the power plate to your speakers and to the touchscreen. And then if you buy the GLD4 package, which is the four speaker system, you will also have our BA rear speaker enclosure uh, with the mounts already on it, ready to mount right to the cart. And then you'll also have the harness that is pre-wired to that with your LED lights if you buy those, and as well as your four pin connector that plugs right into the BA power plate. And then last but not least, you'll have zip ties, a bunch of zip ties, and your hardware to mount your BA power plate down. All righty, bear with me here because this is a lot to remember. So the tools you need to install either the SVR2 or GLD4, uh, for the SVR2, you'll need a impact or screwdriver with a Phillips bit. You'll also need some wire cutters, and then a half inch wrench with a socket. You can also have an end on the socket for your impact as well, but I'd recommend just doing a wrench. Uh, we use stainless steel hardware and using power on it can easily gall the stainless steel. And the two bolts you have to use to mount that BA power plate down are stainless. And they already, I actually galled my first one I ever did because I was using an impact drill and tightened it too fast. So definitely I would recommend using a socket. Uh, it doesn't take long to use since the bolts aren't that long. And then, if you buy the GLD4 package, you will need those tools as well as a drill with a step bit, a step bit that can do a one inch hole. And then one thing I forgot already was you'll also need a drill bit, uh, something like this for the SVR2 as well to drill a hole in the uh, battery tray by the, uh, where the BA power plate mounts to it. So that's what you'll need for the SVR2. Like I said, the GLD4, drill with a step bit. Then you'll also need a panel popper for the GLD4 or a uh, um, flathead screwdriver to pull a few push pins up. And then you'll also need for the BA rear speaker enclosure, you'll need two half inch wrenches to loosen the bolts, remove the bolts by the back seat. Then if you buy the LED light option, just the speakers, just for the speakers, you'll need a 15, 30 seconds or uh, 31 64th drill bit for the LED switch. Uh, that's very specific. The LED switch is kind of small, and that's why I picked these two out. And half inch drill bit can work, but it's just a little bit too big. It'll still mount in there well, but with a 15 30 seconds or um, 31 64th drill bit, it'll fit perfectly. And then if you are buying the uh, underglow LED light option as well, you'll need a quarter inch drill bit for the zip ties, and then you'll also need some electrical tape. So our first step in installing either kit is to remove your seat. You pull it up and you have the little hooks right here and just pull them out of that and sit the back seat wherever you can sit it where it keeps it safe. Then make sure your key is turned off. And then I'll walk around here. And your next step is then to take your half inch socket or wrench and um, undo your power side of the terminal of the battery and then cover it back up so there's not it's not touching anything on the cart. So undo that, and then once that's done, go up here to the dash, and in here there will be three Phillips screws that keep the cup holder down. I already removed those, so I can just pull this right out. And once you got that pulled out, you're going to find a harness that either has purple and white or green and white wires. It's, got, it's a four-pin connector, so there's four wires running to it. And what that is, is it's coming out of your touch screen. And what you're going to want to do is unplug this uh, four pin connector. 
So I just paused it and unplugged it real fast. So now it's unplugged. And then I'm going to go down here to the speak the stock speakers. And I already removed a few screws, but you've got uh, uh, Phillips screws for them holding your stock speakers in. And you want to remove all of those. And once you do that, you also want to unplug them. So I just removed the factory speaker with my Phillips bit and my impact drill. And I also removed the other side. And that factory harness is still in there. The factory harness is what runs from the touchscreen to those speakers. And it starts right here, which is the four pin connector you just we just unplugged from the male connector that's running to the screen. So what you want to do is remove this harness because we don't use it anymore. So take this four pin connector, the female one, and make sure it's not zip tied anywhere else. It's not in here and it, sh it shouldn't be. It just ran to the speakers. And now that your speakers are unplugged and removed, you should just be able to completely remove this harness. So now you want to take your main harness that came with your kit and you want the eight pin connector side. We'll have it labeled when you buy this, but I don't have a label on it right now, but you want the eight pin connector side. Now this is the LED harness. So you've got your XK glow uh, connectors right here, as well as the two pin connector for your LED switch to turn it on and off. Uh, if you didn't buy the LED option, you'll have just this the eight pin connector. And what you want to do is start this and you want to push the start with the pin connector and push it down right inside of here on the bottom side of the steering column. So I just paused and pushed it through. So just like so. So it's below the steering wheel connector. And then you're going to want to push or pull that all the way through. So I'm going to go back over here. And look up and here it is and then i'm going to pull that all the way through and i'm going to run back up here real fast and check and you want that to be pushed and pulled all the way through so your t is here in the dash as well as your four pin connector and then uh, again i've got my t's that run to my speakers and then i've also got if you buy the led option you'll have the LED switch here up here too. But for both kits, either one, you'll have, you want your T to be right here in the dash. So my next step is to plug our four pin connector from the harness into the four pin connector coming out of the touchscreen. And then after I do that, I'm going to take my right speaker lead and it'll be labeled right. And then my, and I'm going to run that to the right speaker. And I'm going to do so by down here in the dash, there is a curve you can see right here. Um, you don't want to try to put the speaker thing, uh, lead on the right of that. You want to be put it, putting it in, in the middle of the dash because it has a bigger opening right there, um, right in the middle of my screen right now, has a bigger opening so you can actually put your speaker connector in there. So again, I'm going to run my right one to my speaker pod here. I'm going to run my left one to my speaker pod there. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to zip tie all this up right here. So this this. Uh, harness cannot be pulled any further and I'm gonna pause real fast and do that. Alrighty, so I ran my right speaker wire to the right hole, my left speaker wire to the left hole. Uh, I plugged my four pin connector in to the screen and then after I did all that I made sure I zip tied the main, the thicker part of the harness, I zip tied that to the uh, bulk of wire right here in the dash for the bigger split loom. And you want to do this in a, in a good manner. You don't want to make sure you're you want to make sure you're not zip tying to a bad spot. So just the bulk of all the wire, just do it all around that and you'll be good to go. And then again, we're just going to leave the LED switch free right now because we'll install that later. So now my next step is to my next step is to install the Hertz speakers. So I have already taken out the screws, the hardware that comes with the box. And the box also comes with a bit um, for these because these are Allen uh, head uh, screws. So now I'm going to take this speaker and this is the LED harness once again. So I got a speaker lead and I got an LED lead. So I'm going to plug both of those in and screw this in. Now, one little installer note on these speakers is that 
you don't want the connectors, the LED or the speaker connectors to be directly behind the speaker when you're screwing them in because you'll pinch that connector behind the, between the speaker and the floor. So when I put this, when I, once I plug the speaker in, I pulled on the harness a little bit. So here's my extra speaker harness. I was pulling it so the connectors were out of the way and then I was screwing it all in while pulling on this a little bit just to keep them out of the way. And now that I pulled on it, I have some excess here. I did the same on the other side. So I got excess here. And what I'm gonna do is zip tie this excess harness down. So I just zip tied the excess speaker harness right there to the bulk of the wire here in the dash. And now we're gonna finish running this main harness back to the inverter. Now I already ran it for the video just to show you exactly how I did it. So here's what I did is I put it right through there by the uh, steering column mounts part of the that's part of the frame. And there's little holes right here on the side between here and here. And it might vary a little bit based on the year of your evolution, whether it's a classic four plus or a Forester or a carrier, but you want to make sure you're zip tying it along here, here, or, or even down here if necessary. Um, but I didn't need to on this build. And then I ran that harness all the way. Ignore this small wire right here. This is just, I ran, quickly ran my underglow LEDs for the video. So ignore this little one. That's nothing. You're paying attention to the big harness right here with the big split loom. So I ran it right there. I ran it behind the weight. And then I ran it along behind the weight. And I zip tied it right here to the frame, above the frame, right here. It, this is a little different on a four. This is a Forester, and it's a little, it can be a little different. So I then it can be different than a classic four plus. So I ran there, and then I met up with the wiring here um, that's already there, running from the dash to the inverter into the battery. I started zip tying it to that as well. So let me get a different angle on it so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So you've got I ran it all along here, right along with the other split loom, and I put it up right in the hole where the other split loom is at. And um, of course, I'll have more pictures on my written instructions on this, but to show you on the top side, we've got, so here is the big harness we just ran, um, zip tied it along the whole frame and it curls right through here. I put another zip tie on it right here to the existing split loom and harnesses below that. And then it curls right around and right here is my plugs. And again, this is LED harness. So I got my uh, LED plug. I got my two pin connector for the LED switch. And I've got the eight pin connector for the in and out of the speaker. Alrighty. So now it's time to install the rear speaker box. Now that's only if you bought the GLD4 plug and play kit. If you bought the SVR2 you didn't, and you didn't buy the rear speaker box, then ignore this part of the video. I'll put a timestamp right now in the video so you can skip to that point. So you don't have to watch me install this. But if you did buy the this four speaker system, this is how you install this. So my first step is to actually sit this down and pull the push pins out of the controller cover. So let me show you real fast what I mean by that. So we've got the controller cover right here and you've got the two part push pins here, here, and you can technically access the ones way back here but they're a pain in the butt to get to. It's actually a lot easier to get to them if you just remove your cooler. You've already got a screwdriver, so all you gotta do is remove these screws from your cooler, which I'm going to do, and then we'll get to those push pins in the back. Alrighty, so I just removed the cooler slash storage trunk and as you can see right here, I've got push pin right there on the left side of the controller cover and the right side. And now I can get to those a lot easier with my screwdriver to pop those pins out. And it's not essential that you take the cooler storage out, but it's typical that you will take this two part pin apart and you'll drop one of these right behind this cooler and you won't be able to get to it. You'll actually have to take the cooler out just to get to a pin. Actually right here's one that I dropped earlier behind one and I couldn't get to it. So I had to take the cooler out just so I could get to it. So I removed both push pins from the controller cover. So now I can, can pull this controller cover out. And what you're going to do is you're going to drill a hole right in this general vicinity. And there's already a hole here because I installed this on this card already for pictures and all that. So this hole is not pre-existing. This is a one inch hole in diameter that I drilled with a unibit. 
And the reason we do this is to run the speaker wire, speaker box harness from the speaker box to the uh, power plate. So that's why we remove this controller cover is because you have to drill a hole in it. And I don't want you drilling a hole where all that wire is hanging out at. It's much more safe to drill this hole while it's not attached. So drill this hole. And then once you have this hole right here, you want to put the controller cover right back on here. Now you don't want to put the push pins back on it. You don't want to put the push pins back in it yet because we still have to put the speaker harness through the controller cover. So, but as you can see right here, I got the hole and now we can install and mount the speaker harness and then put the harness through the hole. So my first step in installing this speaker box is to remove the bolts that hold the lower bracket on for the back rest. So I got that bolt right here and both of these bolts are half inch wrench and half inch socket. So, and I got the bolt right there and these are stainless steel like everything else in the cart and they will gald if you use power on these bolts. So make sure you use a, a wrench and a socket with a ratchet um, and that way you're not going too fast and galding the bolts. So remove those before we install this box. Okay, so now it's time to put the speaker box in. I just removed the half inch bolts and nuts from the back seat and I'm going to slide the speaker box into its spot. Now there is a trick to this, so I'm gonna show you how. So obviously you want the harness to be on the passenger side, which is where you drilled your hole in your controller cover. And you want to hold the speaker box so the speakers are facing you and the Hertz is so you can read it. In other words, it's not upside down. It's not like this, it's like this. And you want to put your seat back on your cart so you can get your knees right here on the cushions. And you want to take your harness and put that right through the two brackets on the front seat and back seat. And then you want to take your enclosure and dip it at an angle just like so. And then once you got it in there, lean it back. And now we're just going to leave it there. Now, when you're doing this, don't roughhouse it really hard. Our rubber coating is rubber coating. It's not... It's, it's made to be waterproof, it's not bulletproof. So you can kind of dent the coating if you're really hitting it hard against metal. So just nicely and softly put it in there just like I just did. Alrighty, so I got the speaker box that's resting right here on the one inch tubing. And what I want to do is I want to line the mounting hole with the hole that's pre-existing from the half inch bolt that was through the back seat uh, backrest. So I'm gonna line that up and push the bolt through and put the nut on it. And then I also want to make sure I, my harness is on the back side of the seat belt bracket, meaning I don't want it on this side. I want it on the back side, just like so. Because if you have it on the front side, it's gonna curl around and then make it to the hole and it's gonna look like crap. So you want to make sure it's on this side. That way I can actually zip tie it right here to the strut and it'll go in that hole much nicer. So. I'm gonna put that on there and then show you. Alrighty, so I used one hand and lifted the one side of the speaker box up and I lined it up with the holes in the back seat and I pushed the bolt back through it and tightened it down with the half inch wrench and socket. And obviously I did the same on the other side. So now it's mounted down, it's nice and strong. And what I did was I ran my harness through the hole in the controller cover. Now, if you gotta kind of pull the controller, controller cover out, Move it in whatever which way you have to just to get this wire ran because it can be kind of a pain in the butt just running it through there um, in those tight spaces. So you, I actually pulled it out a little bit and ran the wire through it for the majority of it and then put it back into place. So you will run that in there. And then we have a grommet right here that you can see. Um, that is a waterproof grommet. And we did that so it keeps water out. And I also have 3M putty that I put inside on the interior side of that. That way no water can get in there. And that 3M putty will be obviously included with your kit. So when I ran that wire in there, right here is the harness that you can see. Um, right here is the hole. And what I did is I ran that harness through here and then I came out here on the passenger side of the cart and, and I did not drop down in front of the motor right here. I ran behind the frame. So as you can see right here, this is the frame piece right here. I ran behind that and I brought the harness all the way down back over here. So as you can kind of tell, I ran it straight from there, turned it right here through the body and 
brought the harness down right here. So now when I look at it, I got my harness right here for the speaker box and I got my harness right here for the front speakers and LED lights. Alrighty, so we finally got the harness ran, the speaker box is all mounted up and I had the battery tray out which is this plastic piece. I had it out in the last part of the video, but I just put it back in because we're going to start using this. So I, since everything's mounted and ran, I just put my push pins back in the controller cover in the front. I put them in the back as well. And then I screwed my cooler and trunk back down. And now we're ready to install the power plate. So what we're going to do is with this battery tray, you might not have this in your cart. Some people have it blow out when they're driving it. Uh, they're trailering their golf cart around. If you don't have this battery tray, it's not the end of the world, but we like to retain it for this install because it keeps a little bit of coverage from any weather that you might get up, up in here under the seat if you're driving like when it's rainy out or it's red, wet out. So to mount the, control, the uh, power plate down with the battery cover here, we have to drill holes through the plastic of this tray through the frame. So underneath here, so let's call underneath and you're going to see that right here is the battery tray and right here is a hole, right there is a hole, right there is a hole. And what I'm going to do is take a marker and I'm going to mark that there and right there. And then what I'll do is pull this battery tray out. It should just pop right out. And now I got my marks right here and I'm going to drill holes about the size of those holes, a little, maybe a little larger and with a drill with my uh, step bit and when I'm put it back into place. Alrighty. So I just drilled holes in the battery tray. And as you can see now, I can see straight through and I'm going through the holes in the frame and I made them a little bigger than the holes in the frame. That way I have a little bit of play and make sure everything fits well. So I now have those. So now I can install the power plate. But before we do that, we got to do some wiring. So I'm going to cut away the split loom right here. And let me find my cutters. So we've got a big split loom right around the wires coming out of the inverter. And typically there will be a big piece of split loom like this right here. So I'm going to cut this away. And we want to pull the split loom off. And you're going to find that you have green and black wires, thick, thick black wires coming out of the inverter, going to a black and blue wire. And what you want to do is unplug these. So we just unplugged it. You just unplug it by pushing down the top here in the male piece. And what this is going to be doing is both of these are going to plug into your power plate. So we wanted to get those free first. And now, technically, before we start tidying wires up and plugging stuff in, we want to take the power plate and we want to sit it down in the place. So I'm going to grab my power plate. Okay, so I sat it inside the tray here. Now, I am tilting it out so that way I can get access to all the plugs. I'm not mounting it down yet. And one thing, frame of reference, is you definitely don't want to make sure, you want to make sure that you do not short out your battery. It's, it's off anyways. But, and it's unplugged, but you don't want to short out and touch your metal power plate against this connector and that connector. It's just not a good idea. Nothing should happen because the battery's off, but it's not a good idea. So with this power plate just sitting in here so we can access everything, we want to start plugging stuff in. So and then once we plug everything in, we can start tidying up some wires and zip tying them up. So what we're going to do is this black and green wire is going to plug into the short two pin connector right here coming right out of the dash, coming out right out of the power plate, I mean. And then this long plug coming out of the power plate is going to plug into the black and blue wire. So I just plugged them in. Again, the long one goes to the blue and black wire, which is going to the dash, the black and blue wire going to the dash. And then the uh, input of the inverter, which is the thick black and green wire, that is the, uh, I guess technically the input to the power plate, which is the output of the inverter, I should say is plugging to the really, really short lead here on the power side of the power plate. And then my next step is to start plugging everything in. So if you didn't buy the GLD4, you won't have the four pin connector. And then this is the LED version. So we have the XK glow connector there as well. So again, if you didn't buy the, the four speaker system, you won't have this. All you'll have to worry about plugging in is 
this. So the eight pin connector is what runs to the dash for the, your front two speakers. And again, if you bought the LED version, you'll have the two pin connector for the, the power and you'll have the XK glow connector as well running to your speakers. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna sit my phone on my stand and now we're ready to start plugging everything in. And the first thing I wanna do is take my eight pin connector that's running to the dash for the harness we already ran. And I wanna find the top of it. The top of it, there's a ridges on the top. The bottom has no ridges right here. The top has ridges right there. And you wanna find the part of the eight pin connector that accepts that side. So in other words, there's only one way to plug this eight pin connector in. And just to explain what you're seeing here, on this side, we've got the audio. So that's your amp eight pin connector. That's your four pin connector for your speakers. Everything audio wise is right here. LED wise will be in the middle and you'll only have this if, you're ha if you bought the LED option. So we have the LEDs here and then the power is on this side. We already took care of plugging everything for the power. So again, we're gonna take the eight pin connector, make sure I got top on the top. I'm gonna to plug that in. And then if I bought the four speaker system, which is what we just ran, I'll have the four pin connector here and I'm gonna plug this into the four pin connector there. And uh, also to explain, we don't have any duplicates of connectors here. We have an eight pin, a four pin, you have two pins for the LED power. So in other words, there's no way of plugging the wrong pin into the wrong female pin, female to the male pin. There's no way of doing that. We did that on purpose. That way there was no confusion or mistakes made. So I just plugged those in. And so now the speakers are taken care of. And next we have the LED harness here. Now uh, I have, let's see here. We have two, since we have the four speaker system, I have a connector for the rear speakers and a connector for the front speakers. And you'll, you'll see here, if you bought the LED option and you, bought the like underglow option as well. We'll always have a splitter right here on one of the leads coming out of the LED controller. Now, the reason we have a splitter is I have two um, leads coming out of the controller and there's two zones and we want the speakers to be on the same zone, ideally. You don't have to, be, you don't have to but if, if you're doing the underglow, you have to do the speakers on the same zone technically. So uh, what we're gonna do is plug the speakers into both leads on the splitter. And then I will show you how to run underglow wires in the end of this video. And um, you'll all plug the underglows into this. So theoretically, you'll want to run the underglows before you uh, mount this power plate down because you want to be able to access this and plug this all in. So that's still free for the underglow LEDs. But then for the power, which is the switch in the dash we just ran, we ran earlier, we've got a two pin connector. So again, find the top to the top, plug that in. And now everything's plugged in and we still don't want to mount it down yet because now we're going to be entering the, the test phase of everything. So while it's all sitting here, you can, if you want to kind of tidy up your wires and push it back. And you want to make sure when you're doing this that nothing's getting pinched because this kind of sits close to the body and you don't, you want to make sure that this is not really pinching any of these connectors or pins against the body. So everything's looking clean. Now it's not going to stay there very well, but because I'm not going to mount it down yet, but what I did was just kind of now put the bottom out towards the, the phone. So now I can sit here and kind of sit there pretty. And now we're going to test everything to make sure everything sounds right, is working right before we get carried away and start mounting stuff down. And uh, I'm also gonna hold off on the first second here on zip tying any of this stuff down because there's I can make this definitely look a little more pretty with wiring and we're gonna put the split loom back there as well. So now we're ready to test the sound system and just make sure we got some audio coming out of all of this. So our first step is to reconnect everything on the cart. So I already reconnected my positive terminal to the battery and tighten that down well with a half inch socket or wrench and then make sure you put the rubber cover back over. And then my next step is to turn the key on and your screen should turn on just like as it, did, as it did before before you installed our plug and play kit and let's just go to radio just to make sure we have some sound and we've got sound so i'm going to turn that all the way down because it was at 30 and i'm turning it down just so you guys can hear me so now that we know we got sound what we want to do is adjust the volume because the variability in the volume changes a lot per evolution, per touchscreen, and per what you, the customer, will want. So 
a little bit about this screen is that the volume is much louder typically on radio than it is Bluetooth. So if you're going to be using radio or both radio and Bluetooth, you want to adjust the gain on your amp according to, accordingly to 30, max 30 on your screen on the radio. Because if you do the opposite and set it to what sounds good and loud enough for you on Bluetooth, radio will sound twice as loud and will sound twice as, it'll sound terrible because it can't handle that, that, that amount of loudness on the sound system. So we want to do it accordingly to the radio volume. So how we do that is we would, I'm not going to do it because you're not going to be able to hear me talk, but what we would do is we would crank this to 30 on the screen by hitting, you know, uh, volume up. And what you want to do is right here in your amp, little red light you can see right there. That is the gain control on your amp. Normally it'll come with the rubber cover on it. All you gotta do is push that out of the way. That is the gain control on the amp. And what you need is a small flathead screwdriver to, to turn the knob in here. So we leave these um, set to actually all the way down because being all the way down is what's best for the sound system. So it should sound good and clean and plenty loud at 30 because we're going to preset every single one of these. If you get it, it'll be all the way down because it cell sounds just because it's down doesn't mean it's not that loud. It's still way, 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 way louder than the factory sound system. But everything, anything past all the way turned down, it won't sound clean. And the reason why is because this screen the, vo the audio quality coming out of the screen isn't super crystal clear like a high-end head unit would be. And because of that, you can't crank, these speakers in this amp can handle a heck of a lot more volume than we're giving it right now, but the audio clarity is not good enough where it actually it doesn't sound good. It sounds distorted. And distorted audio blows speakers and just doesn't sound good. So you should be happy with it being on radio and being all the way turned down. Now, the only time you would want to change this from all the way down is if you only listen to Bluetooth. Since Bluetooth is typically way more quiet than radio, Bluetooth won't sound very loud when it's cranked to 30. So if you're not going to use radio at all and you're going to use Bluetooth, you want to, what you want to do is go to Bluetooth and crank your volume all the way up to 30. And again, we're on zero right now, but you want to crank that to 30. And then once you're cranked to 30, then you can take your small screwdriver and start turning your gain. So right now it's all the way to the bottom left um, on count counterclockwise. To start turning it up, you want to turn it clockwise. And what we have seen on most of the evolutions we've tested, you want to set it to about 1 to 2 o'clock on the gain. And that's about what's max on what sounds good and still sounds clean. And um, now your Bluetooth volume will be way louder. But again... You don't want to set it on 30 and then expect to go to the radio and play it on 32 because 30 as well, because it's going to be twice as loud and sound terrible because like, again, like this, this, this head unit just doesn't send a good enough signal out to the speakers and amp and it won't sound clean. If you have any questions at that step with the testing and the volume and the gain control and all that, if that overwhelms you or you're confused or you have problems, issues, or just you have questions, please just let us know. You can text us, call us or email us. We will let, answer your questions right away, help you right away, solve any issues you might have. But yeah, don't hesitate to reach out to us at that step. Let's say we're done. The volume's good. Everything's testing. Everything's working. We are ready to install our BA power plate and actually mount it down. Now, if you did buy the underglow LED package, still hold on, hold off on this step because we still need to run the underglows and then plug it into the uh, last lead here. And um, then we'll be able to mount it down. But Mounting it down, super simple, so just pay attention here, then just uh, remember what you saw right in this video to mount the power plate down. But if you didn't buy the underglow LEDs, we can mount it down right now. So again, before you tuck this all, mount it down, you wanna tuck all this wire in and make sure you're not pinching anything. Make sure the wire is not down here, like where the bat back side of the battery tray is at. You wanna have everything above that, and it looks like I am right here. And you'll wanna see that, you know, I, my holes are lining up right now. So I can see straight through the power plate, straight through the battery tray in the frame. And, you know, I'm not having much um, tension. I can push straight up and down against the body pretty good. And it's not real tight. That means I'm not really pinching any of these connectors or harnesses in there real bad, which is what you want. Um, and with that, we can put the uh, 
two half inch uh, nuts and bolts through these holes and tighten them down. So I just bolted down the power plate and I used my half inch socket, half inch wrench. I used the a socket underneath and put my hand on the and wrench right here in the bowl up here and um, it's pretty easy to just reach around from both sides and, and tighten both. And then after I tightened those, I tidied up my wires, used some of my zip ties I had and used the uh, big split loom that I, we originally removed from the cart. I put a bunch of the wiring inside of there and zip tied it. Now I didn't zip tie it as hard as I could. You don't want to do it super, super hard because then you can start pinching some wires and pinching some connectors and possibly pull the pins out. So just zip tie it to the point where it just kind of holds it firm. And then if there's any other spots you want to zip tie, so like I could probably throw another zip tie right here with these other wires from the factory harness. And there's the hole right here in the frame that I zip tied to as well, just keeping everything from shaking and rattling a lot. And yeah, so if you did not buy the LED package from the speakers or underglows, your install is pretty much done. Just make sure you put your cup holder back in your cart and screw that back down and your install is done. But if you did buy either the LED speaker package or and or underglow package, we have two more things we have to talk about. And one being we have the LED switch, which turns the LEDs on and off. And I'll show you all quite quick. So right now, LEDs are on. I have my switch. Slip that. Now they're off. Turn it back on. Now they're back on. And I'm going to show you how to install this real fast. And then I'm going to run the underglows and we'll plug the underglows into the uh, power plate. And again, don't mount this down if you still haven't ran your underglows yet. Okay, so to install the LED switch, our first step is to one, remove the actual switch from the harness. So I'm gonna unplug that. And there is two ways it's gonna plug in and it doesn't actually matter. Uh, this is the top or if that's the top, it doesn't actually matter. Um, it'll only plug in two different ways into the harness here and either way works because all this is is a contact switch. Um, so it doesn't really matter. So that's why I unplug that. I leave this long, this harness long. That way you can install it wherever the heck you want. Now I like to install my LED switch as a hidden switch, which is under the dash typically. So what I will do is I take my 3164 drill bit I have and I'll make some space right here um, on the driver's side and I will drill a hole right through here in the dash down and which is where I'm gonna put my switch at. So I just drilled my hole and my next step is to remove the nut from the switch and then push the switch up through the hole and use my nut and tighten it down on the back side of the dash here. So I just push the switch through and tighten it, finger tighten it down, the, the nut on the back side of the switch. Now you can use like a wrench to tighten that up. It'd be a 9 16 wrench, or you can just use a socket. I used a 9 16 socket and put it on there and just finger tightened it. I didn't use like an actual ratchet or anything like that because you don't want to overdo it. It's just a plastic switch so you can over tighten it and strip the threads out. But now it's tight and like I said, you can tell that it has like a more of an oval shape to it. So you just want to plug the oval shape of the harness. As you can see, it's more of an oval shape. You want to plug it in and now you're done. So now, I plugged it in, I just turned my key on, and if I hit my hidden switch, now I got LED lights. And then, if you want to, it's not essential, but if you want to, throw another zip tie just to keep this harness kind of from dangling around. So we only have two more things to cover here in the video on this installation. Next, we're going to install the underglows or show you how to install the underglows. And then after that, I'm gonna show you how to run the XK Glow app on your phone to control your themes and patterns and colors on the app. But let's install the underglows first. And if you, again, if you didn't buy the underglows, just skip this part of the video to watch how we uh, control the LEDs on the app. So if you buy the underglow package, you will have, you'll have a six footer LED, another six foot LED wire, a three foot LED wire. You're gonna have your four XK Glow LED strips, and then you will need zip ties, a cutter, and you will also need electric tape. So for the video's sake, I already installed a kit to show you best, because that's probably the best way to do this, is just show you how I installed it. So 
how we want to start first is you want to use that three foot LED. So your, your LED wire, so your short one. And you want to make sure that you start again. And I loosen the power plate back up from after we, we tightened it. You know, like I said, you, show, you shouldn't tighten the power plate down if you bought the underglow kit because you want to install the underglows first, then tighten it down. So how we start this is we're going to start right here in the passenger side of the cart right by the power plate. You want to have your three foot LED wire and you want the female side because the female side plugs in to the male side of the connector coming out of the controller. So plug those in and then you're going to run that LED wire down and there's a little part in the frame right here where you can put it below the cart. So then that's what I did and I ran it along the frame and right here I used the hole that exists right here from me how I where the hole where I mount the power plate down I use this hole and I use a zip tie and I mount the LED strip down. Now, and you'll see which side of the LED strip you have to use because it'll plug into, now this will be the, the male side of the connector plugging into the female side of the LED strip connector. Now what you'll see here is I have electrical tape and you want to use electrical tape on every connection. That way it just help, makes it even more marine grade keeping any water out of the connectors and it keeps them plugged in together way better than they do. They, they, they click in well, but it just helps a lot, multiple reasons to tape every end. So we taped that and we zip tied that to the frame there. We also zip tied it to the frame here. And that now it's parallel. Now it's parallel with the cart. And then put the six foot. So now this is the six foot connector, which runs up all the way to the front of the nose, the front cowl. And we plugged that in and I taped that as well. And then we ran that. Now the six foot is a little longer, but it's the best option we have. So what the reason, and since it's long, we have a little extra. So I spooled it up right here and zip tied it to the uh, existing split loom here by the frame. And then I ran the LED strip all the way up and I'll show you how I did it. I ran it with the existing wiring all the way up here and zip tied it all along there. So this is my LED wire right here. Now I did all kind of kind of quick just for this video. So if I if it was a customer's cart, this would be a, wired up a heck of a lot better. Um, but as far as zip ties go, so but we're going to give you plenty of zip ties so you can zip tie everything very very well. So then, as you see the LED wire here, and I have the LED strip zip tied to the frame here. I do it in the middle and I do it on the end, and then of course I tape the connector connections up there, and then. Let's go to the other side. So here on the other side, here's the one end of the LED strip on the front. And here's the other six foot connector. And you will run, plug that in and run this down the frame. Here is the harness from our plug and play kit. And it's on the driver's side here. I just ran the LED wire with the plug and play harness. And then we're going to poke it right through the frame here. And actually, I don't like how I did that. If I would do it again, I would probably run this on top of the frame right here instead of underneath. So run that on top of the frame and then you'll come to your driver's side LED strip. So we plug that into here and again, zip tying to the frame and tape that connection as well. And then over here, we have the charger, which is right here. Since the charger's here on this tray, um, which is the same size as the battery tray. There's no real super good way of having it be able to put a zip tie on here. So I drill a little hole in the plastic here. That way I can run a zip tie around the frame. Now you want to be very careful when doing this because you don't want to drill too far or too into the controller or into anything like that. What I do is I feel above that real fast with my finger, make sure I can actually drill there. And then I drill a little hole there and run the zip tie through. And then again, no, this doesn't have tape on it, but you want to make sure you put tape on every connection. And then I push this through the hole um, right there, and I'll show you where that comes out on top. So it comes out underneath the charger, underneath there, and then right here is my wiring coming from out there. And then what I do is I run that LED wire all the way up here um, behind the frame. So right, not on the, not on the left side of the frame, on the right side of the frame. So it's tucked back away. And what you want to be is above the wheel well here. So up here is what you want to be at. And then I run that wire all the way back 
to here, which is, we got the frame right here. Here's, here's the foot rest, and right here's the frame. And here's my LED strip. I run that wire all the way here to the LED strip. And again, tape that. And then I run the LED strip above the frame and between the body. Now this is for four passenger golf carts only, but this is where I run it at because now I have a nice mounting spot for my zip tie. So I run it above the frame there, above the frame there. Here's the existing wire for like the camera. This is for like the uh, backup camera and the um, license plate light. That's what this split loom wire is here. So I run this above that. Now I wouldn't do this above the frame right here between the body if it was a two passenger golf cart because then this part of the body is actually gonna have stuff sitting on top of it. But on a four passenger, this does not actually have anything sitting on top of it, so you'll be fine. It's not gonna crush the LED strip. And then this is the end of the line. This is, this is it. So what you do is you take some, I take electrical tape and I tape the end multiple times. Not, so there's no, um, none of the four leads for the LEDs are exposed to weather. They're completely taped up and protected. Um, and again, I did this kind of fast just for the video, but you don't want to cover your LED light. I covered it up there when I was taping it fast. You want to do a better job and just make sure you tape just the end and not covering the LED light. That way you get as much glow as you possibly can. And then once that's all zip tied up and done, you just go up here. And like I said, you'd plug that in and then we can mount the, uh, well, actually before I would mount the power plate down, I would test and make sure everything's working. So I made sure it's plugged in. I turned my key on and I'm gonna hit my hidden switch and I got my LEDs and the speakers, speakers there. And then I also got my underglows under the cart. And one thing before I get into the details on the app, one way you can actually change the colors on your controller, that's right here in the, on the power plate, is you can tap this little spot on the controller right here. And as you can see underneath the cart, I'm changing it as I'm tapping it. So now we got green, but yeah, and that's it. So now, as long as everything's working, now we can line up the holes in the power plate here, just like so, and you can mount this power plate down. So now let's start talking about how we control the lights with the app. Alrighty, so we've got the LEDs on, I'll turn the lights off here in the shop, and let's co cover how we control the LEDs with the XK Chrome app. So it's called XK Glow, but the app is actually called XK Chrome. So I'm going to open that and bear with me on the graphics here. My phone doesn't do the best when it's dark out. So we've got the XK Chrome app here. And when, if you download this for the first time, it'll prompt you on how to connect your controller. You connect your controller once and that's it, just once. And from there on out, you don't actually have to use your phone every time to change your lights. You can set your certain patterns or set in certain colors and leave it at that. And just as soon as you turn the lights on, they're going to be what you set them to, but we'll get into that right now. I just got them set to the speakers are on blue and the underglows are on green, but I'm going to show you how we change that. So here, once the, once we're connected, we're on the XK Chrome app. We want to go to the palette screen, which is on the bottom left. And what you're going to see is you're going to have a number one and a number two. And you're gonna see those regardless of whether you just bought the speaker LEDs or you bought both underglows and speaker LEDs. So it might vary based on your kit, but one could be speakers or one could be underglows. It doesn't really matter. But like right now, one is your speakers. So I'm gonna drag that to like pink. And as you can see, the speakers are pink now. I'll drag it to yellow for one. And now my speakers are yellow. And then we've got underglows, which is right here. So now let's say I want to make my underglows blue. You're seeing that the underglows are now blue. And another cool thing is you can actually combine these. So I'm taking my one and dragging it towards my two. And now, as you see it combined, so now I just got one. Now the speakers are the same as the underglows. And what I can do is I don't have to make it solid colors like they are right now. So we're on pink. I can make it breathe. So up here in the top, I can go solid or breathe. So now it's going to breathe or I can do strobe and now it's strobing. And what this dial does right here is it shows you the speed in which it's doing it. So now I went all the way down low. So now it's going to go really slow or I could go up all the way and now it's going super fast. And let's say if you don't want that, let's say you want to be breathe. 
and you want to breathe slowly. So let's go like halfway. So now we're on halfway, and let's say you like that pink. And now let's say you want it to be that every single time you get in the cart. Well, what you do is you click the little plus sign here in the bottom right, and you click set as default. And then you click start up theme. And once you select that, now, this is going to be your theme every single time you turn your LEDs on. So you won't have to worry about getting your phone out and doing this every time you want your lights to flash pink. But um, to change it, you just have to go back into the app and pick whatever the heck you want. If you want your speakers to be pink and your underglows to be blue, and you want one to be solid and one to have strobe, you can do that and you can set that as the default as well. Now, the next thing is themes. So we got... There's Christmas, there's Valentine's Day, there's Ocean Breeze, there's Halloween, there's Happy New Year. There's all these themes that you can do, and you can also set these as your startup theme as well. So let's go like Memorial Day. So now what this is going to do is flash slowly blue, white, and red. Um, red, white, and blue, technically. And you can set this as your startup theme by clicking the little play icon here. Um, click that little play icon there and click OK, and then you can click Startup Theme. So now let's say it's Memorial Day weekend and you want your cart to do this all weekend, you set up the Startup Theme every time you turn your lights on, it's gonna do this. Another thing you can do is click on the actual lights and then on the top right here, there's a little I for information and you can click on that. Now you can change, you can adjust the theme. You can pick the colors, you can pick which way it does it. So whether you want to be that one, or fade in and out. Um, you can do all that. You can adjust the brightness. You can adjust the speed. You can, you can do everything with this app. And then another cool thing you can do is you can create your own theme. So if you click new up here, now you're starting from scratch. You can start creating your own theme. So if you want a theme that has, let's see, let's delete these colors that are on here. If you want a theme that's red, click red plus. You want blue, click plus. Then you want green, click plus, yellow plus. And you can click all that and then pick your pattern you want, and then pick your speed you want at the bottom and your brightness, and you can click save. And now we just designed, if we play this if we play this one right here, we just designed that theme in 10 seconds. So next after that, we've got music. Now this isn't a super popular option, and I'll tell you why. One is the one mode of music is you have to have the music downloaded on your phone, and nobody has music downloaded on their phone anymore. You use it with the streaming device. So if you don't have music actually downloaded on your phone, this feature won't work. But what you can do is click the little microphone at the top right. And uh, we've had some people have issues with this, working or not. Um, and it's just an XK Chrome app problem. But what you can do with this is now it's listening. So if you notice, as I'm talking, the lights are only lighting up because this tablet can actually hear me talk. And what this does is it listens for your music. So if you're listening to like your radio, um, then it is going to pick up the music. The reason I said is sometimes it doesn't work is some people have problems playing with music on their phone through Bluetooth and then also having this version of the screen on, um, well, this version of like the, the page on this app on. I've seen that happen a few times, not a lot, but I've seen that based on, per, based on what phone it is and all that. But yeah, right now it's listening to me, which it would, in other words, it'd be listening to the music. And as I talk, it's lighting up with me. The reason why this isn't very popular is because golf carts make a heck of a lot of noise driving down the road. So unless your cart's sitting still, it's not really going to jump to the music unless it's sitting still like it is right now in the video. And it would be pretty cool to listen to a cool song and it'd go to the music. But if you're driving down the road, it's not going to go to the music. It's just going to go down to hearing you hitting bumps and driving down the road and just hearing wind and it's going to hear a lot. Your, your phone's going to hear a lot through its microphone and it's not really going to go to your music unless, again, like you're sitting still where it's completely silent and it's only listening to the music. And then, last but not least, you got motion. Motion is how fast your phone's moving. So if you notice, as I move this tablet, um, it's lighting up as I move the tablet. So if, you, you know, if you're driving around, what this means is it's only going to be lighting up as you drive around, which is a kind of a cool feature. I know a lot of customers that use this feature. So again, I'm not moving the tablet right now, so it's so it's not so it's dark. As soon as I start moving, it starts lighting up. And again, if you're just constantly moving, driving around, it's going to be lighting up. And to change what it's doing while doing that, you click the plus sign down here, 
And now I can pick what color. So now if I want it to be flashing blue while I'm moving, now I can start driving and it's gonna flash blue. But with that, that is about it. So, and to connect to extra ones, you've got what you got here on the, when I'm on the pallet right here on the bottom, I click on the top right menu button. And now I'm seeing, what I'm seeing here is my controller. And there's, it says, you can't really read it very well through the phone right there. It says zone one and zone two. You can actually turn zones off. So I just turned zone two off, which was the underglows. So now it's just the speakers that are on. And I can do the opposite, vice versa. I can turn the speakers off and turn just underglows on. You know, most people won't really do that. The only reason I would know someone that might turn like, let's say zone one off, which is what speakers are, is if you're driving at night and you have some annoying pattern going on, it can be a little disruptive when you're driving because those speaker, the LEDs and those speakers are super bright and they can definitely be distracting while driving. So you could turn the LEDs off and the speakers just like that. Now you have just underglows. Um, but with that, yeah, there's tons of different things you can do with this app. If you have questions, problems, concerns at all, with, once you get LEDs installed, and you're trying to connect your phone and all that, please let us know. One remark on this is that you have to have your location enabled um, with the app to actually connect your phone to the controller. That's a new thing that's going to phase out in most phones is that you have to have your location on to connect anything on, via Bluetooth. Well, I've officially made the longest video in BA Cards history. So if you're still watching, I salute you. But I wanted to make sure I did a video on the installation because some people would rather watch a video than look at our, our written instructions. So I just didn't want to do a disservice to any of my customers. But if you don't want to watch this full video again, if you're buying this kit, you can just refer to our written instructions on how to install it. Maybe you'll be able to do it faster rather than watching this whole long video. But uh, I don't even know what we're at right now. Probably close to 35, 40 minutes would be my best guess. But um, with that being said, if you have any questions before you buy the kit, please just call us, text us, email us at the information below. If you already bought the kit and you have questions right now, do the same. Call us, text us, email us at the information below. But uh, with that, enjoy your new sound system, whether you bought the SVR2, the GLD4, whether you bought the LED lights or not, um, you're going to really enjoy this kit. And again, if you haven't watched my video comparing and showing you what all the cool features are in both these new sound systems, I'd highly recommend watching that video. But with that, thank you very much for watching and enjoy your new sound system.